My cold and distant academic prodigy childhood friend fell in love with a delinquent. She said he was different from everyone else, that he was vibrant and full of life, like a ray of light illuminating her monotonous life. She skipped classes to go on dates with him. She fought and raced cars for him. She even abandoned me without hesitation in the middle of a raging fire for him. My ten years of unrequited love were completely consumed in that blaze. Later, I went abroad and never saw her again. I never expected that ten years later, I would meet her again during a business meeting. I thought she would have already married that boyfriend of hers and lived happily ever after. But unexpectedly, she stared straight at me, tears streaming down her face. Do you know how long I've been looking for you? Chapter 1 I saw Grace again at a business banquet. She was deep in thought. Her head bowed, revealing a swan-like, snow-white neck under her raven black hair. Even though she was surrounded by a bustling crowd, she seemed to have created an invisible barrier that kept everyone at a distance. She stood out immediately. After ten years, she seemed even colder than before, her gaze as icy as the snow on a frozen tundra. Perhaps it was only when she looked at Justin that the snow would melt into a gentle spring thaw. She didn't notice me, just lowered her gaze with a hint of impatience in her eyes. Noticing me staring at her, a friend beside me whispered, that's the eldest daughter of the Lou family. She just took over the family business after returning from abroad. I heard she graduated from Oxford, a top student. She impressed the board of directors as soon as she came back. Not just some brainless rich girl, she's quite something. Ah, he winked at me with a suggestive smile. She's the perfect, rich and beautiful, female lead. They say the line of people pursuing her stretches from Northby Street to Main Avenue. Want to go introduce yourself? I didn't respond, but my mind couldn't help but wander to memories of Grace from the past. Seventeen-year-old Grace had skin so fair that it seemed almost translucent under the sunlight. Her eyes, when she looked at me seriously, held a faint smile, and her voice was like ice melting in a spring stream. Benjamin, let's both get into Peking University. Okay. That was such a distant memory. Even though I hadn't thought about it for a long time, it was now as clear as if it had happened yesterday. I placed my wine glass back on the waiter's tray and said softly, No need. Let's go. Just then, Grace's gaze swept in my direction and suddenly stopped on me. She froze. Then, she abruptly pushed through the crowd and walked quickly towards me, finally breaking into a run, her high heels clacking urgently on the floor. Benjamin. She called out loudly, her voice trembling with disbelief. I wasn't sure if I was mistaken, but her eyes seemed a little red. I pretended not to see, and turned to leave. Chapter 2. The story of Grace and me isn't particularly special. Our families have been close since we were kids, and we were even born at the same hospital, just hours apart. We were the textbook definition of childhood sweethearts. Grace was someone who had been proud and aloof from birth, seeing everyone around her as nothing more than unrecyclable trash. Even in elementary school, the number of love letters she received could fill half a drawer. She never read a single one, just tore them up in front of the boys' faces and threw the pieces into the trash without any expression. She had every reason to be proud, coming from a privileged background, possessing delicate features, and with a sharp intellect. By the age of three, she was already flipping through the Oxford Dictionary. At eleven, she hacked into her father's company firewall, accessed confidential files, and left her father both furious and reluctantly proud. But she was always a bit more restrained in front of me. Grace never skipped a grade, claiming that if she didn't stick with me, I'd be a hopeless case. So, from childhood through high school, I would either go to her house after school, or she would come to mine, where we'd study together while playing. She'd often tap my head with a pen in frustration, saying, Benjamin. How many times do I have to explain this simple problem before you get it? Are you an idiot? Under the daily tutoring sessions of a genius like Grace, even an idiot would eventually wise up. Growing up, we were always the top two in class, her in first place, me in second. In life, we were inseparable. Her mother would often joke that we were so close we might as well share a pair of pants. She'd even tease my mom about arranging a marriage between us. Every time she said that, I would blush and stay silent. But inside, I was overjoyed. Who wouldn't like Grace? So beautiful, so exceptional, and so openly biased in favor of me. If the story ended here, it would have been a happy ending for childhood sweethearts. Unfortunately, it wasn't long before Justin appeared. Chapter 3 Justin was different from any other guy I had ever met. To put it nicely, he was unconventional. To put it bluntly, he was a delinquent. He transferred to our school during our second year of high school, reportedly expelled from his previous school due to some incident. He never paid attention in class and often skipped school to hang out, while other boys obediently wore their school uniforms. He wore a tight black tank top, revealing the faint outlines of his abs and a tattoo, which made the girls secretly glance at him. He liked dating, and almost every attractive girl in the school had been in a relationship with him at some point. He didn't care about the gossip and even turned those stories into topics of conversation. He hung out with delinquents from outside the school, 
often kissing girls with dyed, messy hair in public. After school, he would straddle his motorcycle, chew gum, and rev the engine, while the girl clinging to him screamed with delight as they sped off. In a place where everyone seemed like they came out of the same mold, he was a unique firework that attracted many people's attention, including Grace. In theory, someone like Justin shouldn't have had any connection with Grace. He was a troublemaker who barely passed his classes, with parents who were gambling addicts and didn't care about him. The teachers ignored him as well. Grace, on the other hand, was a top student who consistently ranked first in the class. She came from a wealthy family, was disciplined, and was the pride of both teachers and parents. But somehow, their paths crossed. The first time Grace received a love letter from Justin, she threw it directly into the trash. Then Justin personally delivered the second letter. He cornered Grace against the wall, smirking as he pinned her hands above her head and blew a puff of white smoke into her ear. Grace, I've got my eye on you. Be my girlfriend. Many boys liked Grace, but none dared to pursue her this boldly. I thought Grace would reject him mercilessly, just like she did with everyone else. But for the first time, she looked a bit flustered, the tips of her ears turning red. Grace and Justin started dating. In her words, Justin was different from everyone else, he was vibrant, like a ray of light illuminating her monotonous life. When I waited for Grace at the school gate, I would often see Justin with his arm around her as they walked out together. He would smile mischievously at Grace. Your little childhood sweetheart is waiting for you. Do you want to do your homework with him? His friends would burst into laughter. Yeah, Grace, go home and study. Benjamin is waiting for you. I felt uncomfortable and frowned at Grace, but she just gave me a cold glance then hooked her arm around Justin's and walked away. She didn't say a single word to me. Justin looked back, giving me a smile that was both mocking and pitiful. I stood at the school gate for a long time before finally lowering my head and leaving alone. Justin didn't like me, and he didn't want Grace to be with me. So, Grace stopped seeking me out, and when I tried to find her, she would coldly turn me away. She no longer went to the library with me to study, nor did she help me with my homework. She started skipping classes to go on dates with Justin. She fought with girls from other schools for him. She even secretly took her family's car to go street racing with him. That year, for the first time in my life, I surpassed Grace and became the top student in our grade, and her grades plummeted. Grace's parents were furious, and the teachers repeatedly tried to talk sense into her, but she was infatuated with Justin as if under a spell. In the end, Grace's mother asked me to go talk to her. I didn't want to go. I knew Grace wouldn't listen to me, but I still went. For the girl who used to tap my head in frustration, calling me an idiot and who said she wanted to go to Peking University with me. She was wearing a miniskirt and fishnet stockings. Her hair dyed yellow, with skull rings on her fingers. She was smoking with Justin in an alleyway. Then they exchanged a kiss behind a cloud of white smoke. She was almost unrecognizable from the meticulous girl I once knew. I walked over and pulled her away. Grace, pulled aside by me, looked impatient. Are you here to lecture me like everyone else? I clenched my fists, trying to reason with her. Grace. Didn't you say you wanted to go to Peking University with me? I paused, suppressing the dull ache in my chest, and almost pleaded, I know you like Justin, and I won't stop you from liking him, but could you at least wait until after the college entrance exams? Grace just sneered, and then Justin came over, wrapping his arm around Grace's neck and planting a kiss on the corner of her mouth. He turned to me, his gaze malicious and taunting, Benjamin, Grace is my girlfriend, what business does she have going to Peking University with you? Who the hell do you think you are? I turned pale and looked at Grace, but she just avoided my gaze. How about this, let her choose for herself. That way, you can stop obsessing over someone else's girl. Justin blew out a puff of smoke and nudged Grace with his elbow. You choose, him or me. To this day, I still remember that brief yet agonizing evening. The sunset was a fiery, intense crimson as I stood there, waiting for Grace's judgment. After a moment, she lifted the corners of her mouth into a mocking smile. Then, right in front of me, she kissed Justin deeply. When they finished, she looked into his eyes and said, Isn't it obvious? Chapter 4 Back to the present. I walked quickly, heading straight for the car as soon as I exited the building. Behind me, Grace stood at the entrance, her face as pale as paper, anxiously looking around but unable to find any trace of me. The streetlights cast her shadow long and thin, giving her an unexpected and fragile appearance, as if she might break at the slightest touch. I leaned back in the driver's seat and lit a cigarette. The scent of menthol filled the enclosed car, and I closed my eyes slightly. I never used to smoke. This habit developed after I went abroad. Tobacco doesn't bring much joy, but it does allow you to momentarily forget your troubles. The reason I left the country was that I almost got burned alive in a fire. That afternoon when I went looking for Grace, some of the thugs who had previously fought with Justin came seeking revenge. I heard it was because Justin had dated one of their sisters, who had even had a miscarriage for him. Later, she continued to cling to Justin. 
But Grace slapped her across the face. The thug couldn't swallow his pride. So he brought in some big shots from the streets. That afternoon, the three of US were tied up and thrown into a van. Justin got the worst of it. He was beaten so badly that he was covered in blood. Then we were dumped in an abandoned warehouse, waiting for the so-called boss to deal with us. Teenagers can take a beating, despite looking bad. The injuries were mostly superficial. Justin soon woke up and managed to rub the ropes tying his hands until they snapped. There were two doors in the warehouse. Grace had always liked taking things apart, and she had once dismantled the lock on the front door of her house. Using a piece of wire, she managed to unlock the door. Just as the three of us were about to make a run for it, the thugs, hearing the noise, kicked the door open. Instinctively, I looked at Grace, and in a split second, her gaze fell on Justin. She grabbed his hand and ran. My hand froze in midair, and my blood turned cold in an instant. As Justin left, he didn't forget to slam the door shut in front of me. I lost the crucial second needed to escape. I hadn't revisited what happened after that for a long time. The thug recognized me and knew that Grace and I were childhood sweethearts. When Grace and Justin ran, the thugs took out all their anger on me. They broke one of my legs with a stick, and I lost count of how many blows I took. By the end, I was barely hanging on to life. Finally, the thugs set the warehouse on fire. The flames were intense, burning hot, making my eyes dry, so dry that I couldn't even shed a tear, but all I felt was cold. A bone chilling cold. Chapter 5. That fire burned away my 10 years of unrequited love. But in the end, I didn't die. A kind passerby saw the fire and called the emergency services, and it was sheer luck that the fire station was nearby that day. So they arrived quickly. When I was rescued, my parents were devastated. I lay in the hospital for a full two weeks, and when I finally woke up, I said only one thing to my parents I don't want to stay here anymore. Because of that incident, my leg could no longer endure intense physical activity. I used to love playing basketball, running long distances, and skiing, but after that, none of it was possible. Our family completely severed ties with the Lou family. Grace's parents brought her over several times, but my parents drove them away each time. After that, to escape this place full of painful memories, my parents decided to immigrate and move the entire family abroad. I changed my contact information and cut all ties with the past. For the next 10 years, I never saw Grace again. I was 17 that year. My youth ended abruptly in such a tragic and absurd way. Chapter 6. At 27, I returned to China to take over the family business. I never expected to see Grace again. The moment I saw her, the pain I had buried for 10 years suddenly resurfaced, making me instinctively avoid her. Grace, the name that had brought so much light into the first 17 years of my life, the name that, at 17, had pushed me into hell. To be fair, what happened that day wasn't entirely Grace's fault. She chose Justin and there was nothing wrong with her not choosing me. Now, I don't hate her as much as I used to, but I also don't want to see her again. It seems that the more you want to avoid someone, the more likely you are to run into them. I didn't expect to see Grace again so soon. In the negotiation meeting room, Grace still had her hand on the door, frozen in place. She stared at me, her whole body rigid as if she had turned to stone. After a long moment, her lips began to tremble, and I wasn't sure if I was imagining it, but I thought I saw her eyes start to fill with blood. A wave of mixed emotions surged through me, and I could hardly control myself. Laura glanced at me. What's wrong? Her words pulled me out of my tangled emotions, and I steadied my voice. Nothing. Throughout the negotiation, both Grace and I were distracted. I was on edge, and as soon as the meeting ended, I tried to leave, but Grace grabbed my arm. Her eyes were bloodshot, and in a hoarse voice, she said, Benjamin, that day, it was you, wasn't it? I've been looking for you for years. At that moment, Memories flooded back uncontrollably, the unbearable pain, the scorching heat of the flames, the leg that could never endure intense activity again, I jerked my hand away, MS, Lou, please have some respect, she pleaded desperately, Benjamin, I know I wronged you back then, all these years, I've thought about that day every day, I, just as I was about to lose control and walk away, Laura suddenly stepped in front of me, she was tall, standing at 5 foot 9, half an inch taller than Grace, when she stood in front of me, she completely blocked Grace's line of sight. MS. Lou. Her tone was nonchalant, but her emotions were icy. Business is business. Why are you making a scene with our CEO in front of everyone? You might not care about rumors, but our company's reputation does. Grace was taken aback, then frowned. This is between Benjamin and me. We're old acquaintances. Please step aside. Laura glanced at me, and I frowned, feeling nothing but irritation. She turned back to Grace with a smirk. Sorry, MS. Lou. Unfortunately. We have another meeting coming up. If you have something to say, save it for next time. With that, she grabbed my hand without giving Grace a chance to respond and led me out the door. Ex-girlfriend. Once we were in the car, 
I sat in silence, lost in thought. Laura looked at me a few times, and finally couldn't help but ask. I shook my head and whispered, no, then she wronged you in the past. I remained silent. Laura cursed under her breath, that woman doesn't look like anything good, her eyes practically on top of her head, pretending to be all cold and aloof. Why didn't you say anything back there? Her meddling broke up my sullen mood, and I couldn't help but laugh. What good would it have done? Are you going to beat her up for me? Of course, Laura fumed. How did she wrong you? Tell me. I said nothing. After a moment, Laura handed me a bottle of water. Next time you see her, I'll deal with her for you. Seeing her expression, full of regret for not having punched Grace earlier, I couldn't help but smile. Those dark emotions slowly faded away. Laura and Grace are two completely different people. Grace was always the unattainable flower on the hilltop. After returning to China, I heard bits and pieces about her life. I thought she liked Justin so much that they would stay together forever. I never expected that after I was rescued, they would break up. I heard it was an unpleasant split, with Grace even slapping Justin in public before they went their separate ways. She apparently found her way back, regaining the top spot in our grade in just one semester. When the college entrance exams came around, she was the top student in the province and went to Peking University. After graduation, she went to the UK for further studies and has only recently returned to take over her family's business. She's the epitome of a golden child, driving a Maybach and wearing high-end custom-made suits. Even when sitting among others, it feels like she's in a world of her own. Laura, on the other hand, is different. Her family is also wealthy, but she has none of that spoiled rich kid attitude. When we work late, she'll set up a camping bed in the office with the rest of us, waking up in the morning with her hair a mess. She usually wears t-shirts that cost about a hundred bucks, blending in with everyone, with none of that rich girl burden. It's easy to be around her. Like she said, it seems I really don't feel that bad anymore. Chapter 7 After seeing Grace again, I started having trouble sleeping frequently, and when I did manage to fall asleep, my dreams were filled with nightmares. In those dreams, it was always the burning fire, a scene of charred red, through the suffocating black smoke. Grace held Justin's hand, coldly watching me as she pushed me into an abyss, and then I would wake up, drenched in sweat. I took a day off, not wanting to stay at home, and with no idea where to go. I wandered aimlessly. When I finally came to my senses, I realized I had wandered to the entrance of my old high school. I stood there for a long time when suddenly someone approached me from behind. It was Grace. I hadn't taken a close look at her last time, but now that I did, I noticed that ten years had changed her quite a bit. She was taller. Her figure was no longer as slender as it had been in her youth. Now more curvaceous. The delicate makeup on her face made her look very mature. But standing there in a fitted black trench coat, I could almost still see the 17-year-old Grace, except the girl who used to scold me for being stupid while tirelessly helping me with my studies had become a blur. What remained was the memory of her abandoning me. Instinctively, I frowned, took a step back, and was about to leave, but Grace called out to me. After a long silence, she spoke in a dry voice. Benjamin, I've always owed you an apology. All these years, I've been looking for you. I keep having dreams about that day, and I regret every moment of leaving you behind. I forced a cold smile. What good is saying all this now? The damage was done, and an apology couldn't undo it. Grace gave a bitter smile. I know. Saying sorry won't change anything. I just want to make it up to you. Can't you give me a chance? No need, I replied. Expressionless. Grace, I don't want to see you again. Let's just be strangers. Strangers. She repeated the word, her tone filled with bitter pain. She took a step forward, her expression growing agitated. Benjamin, I know you resent me. You hate me. If you want to hit me or yell at me. I won't say a word, but we were together for so long, and now you want us to be strangers. I was just confused at the time. Her voice trembled as she continued, but I really regret it now. I looked down, clenching my fists as a storm of emotions brewed inside me, threatening to overtake my mind. It took every ounce of strength I had not to lash out at her. Grace, could you stop being so shameless? You say you regret it, and I'm supposed to forgive you. Do you have any idea? I bit down hard on my words tasting blood. Do you have any idea what I went through back then? And you still dare stand in front of me? Grace's brow furrowed with pain, and she fell silent. Honestly, have I hated Grace all these years? Of course I have, but not as much as you might think. She liked Justin, and it was natural for her to choose him over me. But what did I do wrong? Who could I blame? Over the years, I've come to terms with it. Maybe it was just my fate to go through such a catastrophe. I never expected an apology from her. All I wanted was to never see her again. Grace called out to me from behind, her voice trembling with fear. Benjamin, you liked me back then, didn't you? I wanted to tell you, I liked you too. I was just too stupid to realize it back then. I, I didn't stop walking, confessing her feelings now. 
How absurd. I had liked Grace for many years, very much, so much, and I had waited for her for many years, but the fragile love of a young person crumbled like paper in the face of such a disaster, consumed in an instant by the flames. Now, all I feel for her is overwhelming disgust, disgust so strong that I don't want to see her ever again. Back then, she didn't choose me, and in the future, I don't need to be chosen by her. As I reached the street corner, I suddenly stopped in my tracks, a man in a faded jacket, surprised, took off his sunglasses, Benjamin. He smiled, do you remember me? I'm Justin. Chapter 8 At a business banquet I attended with Laura, I heard a familiar voice while walking down the hallway to the restroom, peeking around the corner, I saw Justin, dressed in a suit, holding Grace from behind. All these years, I've never forgotten you, I've always thought about you, Grace. It was clear that Justin hadn't been doing well these past years. His suit was ill-fitting, with his ankles exposed. The rebellious look on his face had been replaced by a greasy slickness, his stomach slightly bulging, and overall, he had let himself go. Who knows how he managed to sneak in here. I glanced at the scar on the side of Justin's face. After I left the country, some of my friends, angry on my behalf, tracked Justin down and ambushed him. Justin was nearly beaten to death that time, left clinging to life. My friends were all from wealthy and influential families, so Justin never found out who was behind the attack and could only chalk it up to bad luck. He later got into trouble again and was expelled, and with no education and no job prospects. Every job he did find was sabotaged by my friends back home. In the end, he had no choice but to turn to robbery, for which he was sentenced to seven years in prison. I made sure he was well taken care of in there, and his suffering could be said to have been a hundred times worse than mine. It was then that I suddenly realized something. He was really nothing. I figured Justin must have hit rock bottom and now, seeing Grace again, he was desperate to climb back up. Grace said nothing. I know you're angry at me, Justin said. His eyes red. But I was scared too. I didn't mean to do it. His hand slowly moved up, caressing her. I know you haven't forgotten me either. Grace, do you remember how much you liked me back then? You even gave up Benjamin for me. Grace suddenly shoved him away, her eyes blazing with anger. Don't you dare mention him again. Her voice was icy and she mercilessly added, the thing I regret most in my life is saving you back then. She looked Justin up and down, her expression turning to contempt when she saw his suit. The foolish infatuation of youth had completely shattered after ten years, revealing the harsh reality. The current Justin probably wasn't even qualified to stand before Grace anymore. Grace now owned eighteen companies and was a bona fide heiress. A single piece of her clothing was worth more than Justin could earn in a year, and the once glorious Justin was now an unemployed ex-convict. They were truly from two different worlds now. Justin, don't ever show up in front of me again. Justin was startled by her glare, his mouth hanging open but unable to speak. Grace walked away without a second glance. I turned away and lit a cigarette. What a twisted fate. Seaside City isn't that big, but it still has a population of 8 million. When I came back, I never thought I'd run into anyone I used to know. But here they were, one after another, showing up on my doorstep. I never expected Grace to have no lingering feelings for Justin. Grace is someone who seems indifferent to everything, but in reality, she's very obsessive. Since she was a child, when she liked something, she had to have it, and she wasn't one to get bored easily, to be honest. I thought Grace liked him so much back then that they would always be together, but it turns out they had a messy breakup too. I returned to the banquet, thinking Justin would have left, but to my surprise, he was still there, and he spotted me. He walked over with a glass of wine, as if he had completely forgotten what Grace had just said and as if he had forgotten everything that happened all those years ago, he approached with a sly grin. What a coincidence. Benjamin, it's been a long time. How have you been all these years? I stared at him for a moment, said nothing, and turned to leave. If I could understand why Grace chose Justin back then, what I could never forgive was how Justin shut that door, trapping me in hell. I still don't know why he did it. Was it a deliberate act of revenge because he thought Grace and I were close? Or was it a panicked reaction to buy time? And I don't care to know. All I know is that I despise the man standing before me, especially when he shows up acting like nothing happened, I could kill him on the spot. I took a deep breath. There were too many people around. I couldn't lose my composure in public. But Justin wasn't done. He grabbed my arm. We were old classmates. Benjamin. Why the attitude? Have you forgotten how you chased after Grace back then? He sneered, wrapping his arm around my neck. You followed her around like a dog. But she only liked me. He kept rambling on, trying to take out his frustrations from Grace on me. I set my drink down on the waiter's tray and loosened my tie. Pow. My punch sent Justin's head snapping to the side, and the rest of his words got stuck in his throat. I withdrew my fist, aching from the force, and my gaze turned cold. Inch by inch, you dare hit me. 
A flash of venom crossed Justin's eyes as he clutched his face and started yelling, Benjamin, you son of a bitch, how dare you hit me? Who the hell do you think you are? Somebody, call the police, someone's assaulting me. Clearly, this was his first time in a place like this. The people around us watched the scene with amused expressions, as if watching a clown perform. Justin's voice gradually lowered as he realized no one was taking him seriously. I casually took the handkerchief my assistant handed me, wiped my hands, and tossed it aside. Grace, seeing the commotion, rushed over in concern. Benjamin, are you okay? She looked me over from head to toe, and once she confirmed I was fine, she turned on Justin with disgust. Why are you still here embarrassing yourself? Didn't I tell you to get lost? Justin, gritting his teeth, tried to say something, but I looked down at him coldly. Security. Get this man out of here. Justin was dragged away by two burly security guards. His frantic shouts for Grace ignored as she didn't even glance his way. I pulled away from Grace in frustration and left the banquet hall. The autumn wind carried a chill, and I realized belatedly that I was cold. Laura ran out after me, handing me the coat she had prepared. Who was that idiot just now? I asked you before, what's the deal with this Lou woman? What did she do to you? I clutched the coat, soaking in the lingering warmth. Since the incident, I hadn't told anyone about what happened. I didn't want to talk about it. But now, for some reason, maybe because the autumn night was too cold, or maybe because the person beside me was too warm, after a long silence, I finally spoke. Chapter 9 Laura stayed silent for a long time. I tugged at the corners of my mouth, offering a slight, bitter smile. A tragedy that happens to someone else often carries a hint of absurdity, and it's normal for her to feel some disdain. But then she slowly hugged me, shielding me from the night leaving only her warmth, I whispered, isn't it kind of pathetic? Laura replied softly, a little, but not you, it's them, I couldn't help but curl my lips into a smile, I didn't expect her to say anything sentimental, Laura's not that type, in the office, when the young guys secretly admire her, she thinks they're having an eye spasm and even asks if they've been staring at the computer for too long, making their eyes dry, but suddenly, the cracks in my heart didn't seem so unbearable anymore, I suddenly asked, Laura, do you have feelings for me? I'm not an idiot, and I don't like playing games where you pretend to be distant just to attract someone. Laura is really good to me. She's a great person, and pretending not to notice any longer would be disingenuous. Laura's face turned visibly red under the night sky, and soon even her neck was flushed. She widened her eyes, and her beautiful pupils reflected my smile. I thought she would deny it, but to my surprise, she just stared at me. You're only realizing that now. I was speechless, avoiding her gaze. I don't want to lead you on. I'm really not ready for a relationship right now. I once liked someone, but after such a painful end to that unrequited love, I'm really scared. Over the years, it's not like there haven't been girls who showed interest in me, some of them even very good. I tried to force myself to give it a shot, but every time, at the last moment, I couldn't bear to go through with it. For so many years, Laura has been the only one whose presence I could tolerate, but that's all it was. I'm really scared. Laura seemed a bit disappointed, but she still smiled bright and untroubled, I understand, and I can wait, Benjamin, as long as you don't push me away, I won't ask for more, I was taken aback, Laura has everything going for her, she doesn't lose to grace in terms of family background or looks, and though she's a bit rough around the edges, there are plenty of men who'd line up around the block for her, a strange emotion welled up in my heart, a tightness in my chest, just then, grace showed up, as soon as she saw me, she hurriedly tried to explain, Benjamin, I really didn't know he would come today, you. She didn't get to finish. Laura's slap landed squarely on her face. She wasn't bluffing when she said she'd hit Grace, she really did it. I don't know how strong Laura is, but she didn't hold back at all. Grace staggered, almost falling, and blood trickled from the corner of her mouth. Laura's eyes were dark with contempt as she spat, and you still have the nerve to come looking for him. Grace's expression turned cold as she wiped the blood from her mouth. This is between Benjamin and me, it's none of your business. Laura casually rolled up the sleeves of her $40,000 Chanel coat. You're harassing my boyfriend, and you think it's none of my business. Get lost, and if you come looking for Benjamin again, I'll hit you every time I see you. I was stunned for a moment, then quickly caught on and didn't refute Laura's words. Grace froze, then looked at me in disbelief. Boyfriend. Benjamin, are you with her? Yes. Laura hooked her arm around mine and said mockingly, MS. Lou, in terms of family background and looks. I don't lose to you. As for age, she gave Grace a once-over. I'm much younger than you. Auntie, you should know your place. If Benjamin doesn't choose me, do you really think he'd choose an old woman like you? Grace's face turned ashen. I spoke calmly. Grace, I don't care for your apology, and I don't need your compensation. You should go. The color drained from Grace's face. Her throat tightened as she choked back tears. 
Ignoring Laura's presence as she stepped forward, her eyes read, Benjamin, I really regret it, I beg you, you don't know what I've been through all these years, please don't do this, give me a chance, I'll do anything you want, I've finally found you after all these years. I've been looking for you for 10 years. Laura's eyes widened, hey, you want to get hit again, don't you? I stopped her and looked at Grace seriously, I don't blame you for what happened back then, and you don't need to make it up to me, but Grace, I really don't want to see you again. If you really feel you owe me something, then please don't ever show up in front of me again. Grace staggered, her face clouded with deep despair. Then she let out a bitter laugh. Fine, if that's what you want, then I'll respect your wish. Chapter 10 I never expected that would be the last time I saw Grace. The next time I heard about her was on the local news. Men kills out of love turned hate. Eris dies on the spot. Justin, still obsessed with Grace, continued to pester her relentlessly. Grace, who only felt disgust and hatred for him. Finally had enough and had someone give Justin a beating. Justin, already having nothing, was pushed to the brink of desperation by Grace. Consumed with hatred, he ambushed her one day as she was entering her company, stabbing her seven or eight times. Each strike aimed to kill. By the time the ambulance arrived, Grace had no pulse. Justin, covered in blood, stood in the street, laughing hysterically. Grace, who did you think you were, acting all high and mighty? You were the one pretending all along. You deserved this. He murdered her in broad daylight, in front of many witnesses, with plenty of surveillance footage capturing the event. There was no question about his guilt. The court quickly sentenced him to death, with immediate execution. My company was expanding overseas, and I planned to leave the country with Laura. Before leaving, I visited Grace's grave. The tombstone bore a picture of her from when she was 17. Her eyes were clear, with a slight smile, with my hands in my pockets. I stood before her grave, and suddenly, I saw the image of that young girl her black hair blowing in the wind, she had a pair of incredibly beautiful, almond-shaped eyes, and the way she looked at me carried a barely noticeable gentleness. I asked her, Grace, why didn't you agree when the teacher suggested you skip a grade? She scoffed and turned her head away, if I go, what will you, the idiot, do? You might not even get into college and end up screwing screws somewhere. I pouted angrily, I'm not that dumb, you're talking nonsense. She looked at me, a hint of a smile in her eyes, and reached out to ruffle my spiky hair. I closed my eyes, that was such a distant memory, one I hadn't thought about in a long time. After she turned 17, Grace had changed so much, becoming someone unrecognizable, someone I didn't dare to think about, but now that she's gone, I suddenly remember what she was like when she was young. I turned away, the 17-year-old girl rested her chin on her hand, looking at the boy across from her, idiot, even after all these explanations, you still don't get it, what will you do without me? Those faces gradually blurred leaving behind nothing but emptiness. The absurdity of youth, after so many years, had finally come to an end. Perhaps we should have said goodbye long ago, but this farewell came so late. Grace, if there is another life, I hope we never meet again. Grace's perspective, I once thought Justin was the light of my life. For the first 17 years of my life, everything was planned, meticulous, and orderly. It seemed that every stage of my life was mapped out, what I should do, what I shouldn't do, with no room for mistakes. I never imagined that a person could live like Justin, I had never met a boy like him, he wasn't good at studying, had a terrible reputation, but he seemed so free, he didn't care about what anyone thought, so when he cornered me, telling me he liked me, and I saw that light of freedom in his eyes, I couldn't help but nod, the time I spent with Justin was joyful, I had never experienced anything like it in my previous life, I didn't have to care about what my parents or teachers thought, didn't have to worry about grades, I just did whatever I wanted. I became obsessed with those days and grew to loathe the monotony of my past even more. Benjamin represented that monotony. So when he came to me, saying he wanted to go to Peking University together, all I felt was disgust. I thought I loved Justin. So when we were in that warehouse, I didn't hesitate to leave with him. And then came the fire. It was as if that fire burned away the fog in my mind. When I saw Justin again, I finally realized something, belatedly. Too late. I didn't love him. I just hated my monotonous life and fell in love with what he represented, so-called freedom. When I found out what happened to Benjamin, I was devastated. I crouched on the ground, tearing at my hair, crying my heart out. I didn't know how he survived. I didn't know what I was afraid of. I just knew I couldn't bear to think about the look of despair in his eyes when I grabbed Justin's hand. In that moment, I knew something important had been lost forever. In the ten years that followed, I never saw Benjamin again. The CU family completely cut ties with my family. I searched for many people. But it seemed that Benjamin had made up his mind to sever all connections with the past. I could never find him again. I went to the United States, the United Kingdom, lived in Australia for three months, traveled all over the Netherlands, 
and spent the coldest winter in Canada. Many times I fantasized about opening my eyes and seeing that boy with the scarf, smiling at me with warmth in his eyes. I started having recurring dreams. In the first part of the dream, everything was always beautiful, he was lying on the carpet in my room, frowning as he complained. Grace, this problem is so hard, can you explain it to me again? But as I walked over, the scene would change. Flames would engulf the abandoned warehouse, and he would lie there, covered in blood, weeping tears of blood as he looked at me. He never said a word, but just one look from him was enough to wake me up in the middle of the night, unable to sleep again. I thought that as time passed, I would gradually forget him, but his face only became clearer in my mind. I knew then that Benjamin had become an obsession. It was only after losing him that I realized how much I loved him. Justin was never my light. My light had been by my side all along. He had accompanied me for many years. When I saw Benjamin again, it was ten years later. For a moment, I thought I was seeing things, my heart skipped a beat. By the time I went looking for him, he was gone. I don't remember how I got home that day. I just know I was in a daze. My heart swelling with pain. A sharp, piercing pain. But soon, I saw him again. Benjamin had changed a lot. Yet somehow, nothing had changed at all. Except that the way he looked at me was completely different, there was no warmth left. In that moment, my heart filled with bitterness. Like a traveler who had wandered alone for years finally seeing home. I thought that no matter how much he resented me, I would accept it. I wanted to make it up to him. I didn't dare to hope for much. But secretly, I wished he could look at me like he used to. But it seemed he didn't need me anymore. He had someone else by his side. The way he looked at me held no affection. Only disgust. As if he was looking at something filthy that he couldn't wait to avoid. I can't describe how that felt. It was as if a knife had plunged straight from his gaze into my heart, bloody, cold, and so painful that I could barely stand. I almost tortured myself by feeling that pain. I deserved it. I brought this upon myself. I never expected Justin to show up again, reopening Benjamin's wounds, ignoring my warnings, and clinging to me once more. Years ago, I ended things with Justin with a slap. I thought we were completely over. But seeing him again, I realized that the hatred in my heart had resurfaced and I even wished he would die. I know I was the one who hurt Benjamin, but if it hadn't been for Justin, maybe things wouldn't have ended up this way. I had someone take revenge on him. I never thought he would be driven to madness, stabbing me in the street. As I felt my life slipping away, I suddenly felt at peace. This was what we owed Benjamin. Justin and I, we both deserved to go to hell. The judgment that had been waiting for years had finally been delivered, and I found that I felt relieved. I looked at the sky, a clear blue without a trace of a cloud, just like ten years ago. And suddenly, I saw that boy in the white shirt again. He asked me, Grace, I heard the teacher talk to you today. Why didn't you agree to skip a grade? I reached out on tiptoe, and his hair felt a little stiff, carrying the scent of sunshine. After a long while, I smiled. Idiot. If I left, what would you do? 